Name of the person who you interviewed. That's Paul Carter Harris. What a genius. What, what, what a great thinker. And he's talking about the use of nigger, which is, as far as I'm concerned, a curse word. Mm -hmm. It's a pejorative, and there's no two ways about it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he was talking, and he was agreeing with that point of view about how it's not good. You know, maybe it serves a purpose when you're writing antebellum fiction or something like that, but then you have to know that you're going to use that word in the same way that you might use the word motherfucker, as he cites specific you don't use the term motherfucker if you don't know the context mm. or the people to whom you are using it. Well, I have a problem with many of my friends and uh, colleagues who call themselves queer. Because when I was growing up, you did not use the term queer without meaning that you wanted to bash somebody's head in. This was in Queens in the early 60s. And it's like, oh yeah, let's go over to uh, um, this place in Jackson Heights and roll a few queers was a typical kind of a thing. The word was never used in a polite or non-pejorative context. Now, so many people say, we're here, we're queer, da 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 And they, and I say, that really makes me uncomfortable, even though I've helped run queer festivals for writers. Mm -hmm. and things like that and I'm quite open with about this with them they say well don't you know we've reclaimed the word it's like yeah you own it right now at this moment in history you've got the rainbow logo and all that and I think it's wonderful but the problem is that after let's forget President Trump let's think about president you know the the, the, the next in the dynasty of that kind of person or in some other country they're going to re reclaim the word and all of a sudden bashing mm. is going to start happening again and all of a sudden it's going to become a word used by people that are willing to shoot 49 people in a nightclub in Orlando, Florida. Mm. The pejorative of that has not gone away. Now maybe it wouldn't have made a difference to that asshole if um, they had just called themselves gay. But to me, and the society in which I was brought up, and watching old stuff, and listening to old radio, and all that, the terms queer, or fairy, or whatever, are not nice words. It's interesting because uh, I remember um, the, uh, Nat, Hen I, Nat Hentoff, he's right from oh. his voice. Now what happened with, it's interesting because he, uh, he was, he went to old days. Hentoff is another genius, but I think he was wrong about so much. Well, let, me, let me just say, yeah. get this out. Uh, what, what happened was he was one of those people that, that when he put out a new dictionary, like Mary Webster, whatever, yeah. they, put out, they would consult him with new words, whatever have you. And at some point he railed on in the village voice, the weekly newspaper, uh, about you know the, 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 the use of the word gay. He says, I'm through with this. Uh, he was railing and said, they can't appropriate. Gay means beautiful, you're happy. It doesn't mean this other thing. And so, well, so words evolve. They, so this whole thing. Uh, yeah, although we can trace gay back to the 1890s. I had a discussion of this on the radio just two weeks ago. Um, and if you watch the movie Bringing Up Baby, which Cary Grant was 1941, where he is for complicated comedy reasons wearing a woman's robes, and the woman comes home and she says, but why are you wearing my robes? And Cary Grant leaps in the air and says, because I've suddenly gone gay all of a sudden. That's 1942, 43. So this is a word that goes back. It always, and people in Hollywood who knew, like, you know, elbowed each other and said, ah, that was funny. Yeah. So it, that was not actually a pejorative. That was, that, that was uh, but yes. That's what you call these days an Easter egg or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Now, to, very much so, very much so. But at that time, Inside if joke. you said that you felt queer, that meant that you were a little sick to your stomach yeah. or that a short story had something weird as in supernatural about it. Hmm. So you went to a foggy bank and it was queer. Something could jump out at you. Or you just felt queer, you're dizzy.
Essentially, because my neighborhood in the South Bronx, where I grew up, well, we, we wasn't doing queer or gay, whatever. We was doing faggot, and and, and it wasn't a bad, yeah. it wasn't a bad thing because, it, interestingly enough, every group, almost every group, had I'm going to say a faggot in it. But we wouldn't think it wasn't fag wasn't a bad necessarily a bad term. Depends on where you live. It, it depends on depends on how you said it. So yeah. somebody, some, if somebody said to said to a, to, to a, you know to a homosexual man, are oh, you a faggot like that? I said I may be a faggot, but I can kick your ass. I can beat him up. <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, well, that, that I mean, of, that's true of, but, but you know, again, any of these words. But then again, we could say it in a, in a regular, to anybody, and it would be fine. It's just how you use it. It's the context. Yeah, yeah. It's and always the context. I have a great, I have a great story. I've told this story before. In fact, it's on YouTube someplace. I have to tell you the story. When I was in Belize, there was this guy, and they called him Nigger Charlie, mm -hmm. you know? And... Um, and he got the name because of the, there's a film, a black exploitation film called so called black exploitation film called The Legend of Lady Charlie. And when they showed it in, in, in Belize, somebody in the audience said, That looks like Charlie, the guy who's there. So they, the whole, you know, Belize is a, is a, is a, a, a small a town in, 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 uh, in, well, country, really. Uh, well, uh, it's in Punta Gorda. But, um, Punta Gorda is where this guy is from, but Punta yeah. Gorda is a small town. It's the most southern, most small, biggest town in, in Belize. And so everybody in that place called him Nigga Chuck. Then on, it was well known. Well, some some rednecks, you know, some from from the south who were ex, were I guess they were trying to run off some um, run away for some crime they did, whatever happened. They 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 just thought this was so funny. So every time they called him, they said Nigga Charlie, but you know they said it. So he took them to court, and in court he said, you know, they called him the, the judge, but the judge says, well. Well, well, Charlie, I, I thought that was your name. He says, yes, but not the way they say it. <laughs> and that's, that's the story. Not yeah. the way they say it. <laughs> well, Hent Hentoff is a complicated guy because he was this absolutist free freedom of speech to the point where there was the, the, he was so absolute about it that he was wrong. There are some words that just should not be used under certain circumstances. And I can't think of a friendly use of the word nigger spoken by certain people. I certainly don't want to appropriate for my people the word kike. I can't see anybody ever saying, hey, it's kike Jim and being friendly about it. There is no context for that. It doesn't exist. But it's the same logic. And there are just some lines that are, not, it's not just a question of disrespectful, it's a question of verbal violence, the way some people use these things. So I have funny feelings when in the context of my youth, certain words that were used in, as a pejorative in a violent, nasty manner become... I know. Not only accepted, but re-owned and reused and rephrased. Now, I work a lot in technology, and I hear things reborn all the time using old words and stuff like that. It's a similar kind of a thing, only insofar as how language is used, what the etymology is, what the semantics are. And, you know, I, uh, um, I'm possibly Noam Chomsky could get into it, but I've never heard it expressed as well by anybody ever than that guy in that video. Oh, Paul Clark Harrison. Yeah, and I was very impressed when I looked him up in Wikipedia mm -hmm. and saw the people, the actors who he's trained and all that. Mm -hmm. And by the way, everybody, if you're somebody who produces audiobooks, he is this guy. He has got a yeah. voice. This, oh, yeah. He is magnificent. Well, he lives, he lives, in, he, lives uh, he makes his home in Panama now. Does he? Yes, yes. Does he? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tell him. I'll tell him. Oh, we'll see this. Thanks.